the Cavendish experiment. In 1687, eminent physicist Sir Isaac Newton conducted an experiment to derive the equation that we know so well today. F is equal to GM1M2 over R squared. However, for years afterwards, most scientists simply disregarded G, thinking it to be just a proportionality constant and therefore unimportant. In 1798, over a hundred years later, however, a scientist named Henry Cavendish decided to experimentally find the mass and density of the Earth to use an astronomical calculation. During this process, he also calculated the value of g, coming within 1% of modern-day accuracy. In today's episode, the physics boys will endeavor to recreate Cavendish's experiment using everyday materials. The experiment. Cavendish's experiment works on the principle of gravitational attraction between objects. For our experiment, we suspended a torsion bar from the ceiling of Santiago's garage and attached two small fishing weights to either end of the bar. Then, we let it settle and attain a state of rest, which takes a lot longer than you think it does. And finally, once it had attained rest, we brought the buckets filled with sand and some weights to either end of the bar. As the bar oscillated back and forth, we took our measurements and used them to calculate our gravitational constant. Here are our final measurements. The length of the bar, or L, is equal to 0.92 meters. Theta, or the angle the torsion bar moves from rest to a state of equilibrium, is equal to 0.15708 radians. The distance between the two disproportionate masses, r, is equal to 0.13 meters. The oscillation time period, t, is equal to 21 minutes, or 1,260 seconds. And the mass of the buckets, m1, is equal to 43.0913 kilograms. The derivation. To begin with, let's start by reiterating what we already know. The gravitational equation is F is equal to GM1M2 over R squared. The first part of the derivation of G is to find the angle at the equilibrium point, where the gravitational force from the buckets equals the torque from the twisting wire. This is found through measurement with a protractor. Next, we find the force-torque relationship. This is defined by the formula tau is equal to FL, where tau is the torque, F is the gravitational force, and L is the total length of the bar. Another important factor to consider is the relationship between torque and resistance. A twisted wire will result tau t is equal to kappa theta, where tau t is the torque of a twisted wire, kappa is the torsion coefficient, and theta is the angle the torsion bar moves from rest to equilibrium. At equilibrium, tau is equal to tau t because the wire is not twisted. Therefore, we see that tau is equal to fl is equal to kappa theta is equal to tau t. From this, we can set f is equal to kappa theta over l. Now, Substituting our newfound definition for F into the original gravitation equation, we get F is equal to kappa theta over L equals GM1M2 over R squared. All of the values shown here can be measured, with the exception of G and kappa, which need to be calculated. To find kappa, we first use the oscillation equation T is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the quantity i over kappa, where t is the oscillation period and i is the moment of inertia of the torsion bar. For simplicity's sake, we can square both sides of the equation to get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared times the quantity i over kappa. The moment of inertia, i, can be defined as i is equal to m2l squared over 2 where m2 is the mass of the smaller weight, and l is the length of the torsion bar. Substituting this back into the previous equation, 
we get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared times the quantity of m2l squared over 2 kappa. Now, isolating kappa, we get kappa is equal to 4 pi squared times the quantity of ml squared over 2t squared. And finally, plugging this value of kappa into our redefined gravitation equation, we get 4 pi m2 l squared theta over 2 t squared l is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Sounds pretty complicated, right? When simplified, this equation simply becomes 2 pi squared l theta over t squared is equal to g m1 over r squared. Now, isolating g, we get g is equal to 2 pi squared l theta r squared over t squared m1. When we plug our measurements into the gravitation equation, we get the messy equation that you see on the board. Simplified, this results in g is equal to 7.047 times 10 to the negative 10th meter cubed over kilogram second squared. Hooray! Right? Wait a second. The actual value of g is 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11th meter cubed over kilogram second squared. So why are we celebrating? Well, when compared to Cavendish's original setup, ours was subject to various factors that are uncontrollable without access to the resources he had. As you can see in the video, the fishing weights are oscillating around the point of equilibrium. It took us many, many trials to get the experiment to work correctly, and what you see is just a small portion of what was an hours-long experiment. We had to deal with factors such as air currents. Whereas Cavendish just housed his entire apparatus inside a vacuum-sealed box to mitigate the problem. We had to use a protractor to calculate our data, whereas modern-day scientists simply used lasers with pinpoint accuracy. Science on a budget can only achieve so much, but let's spell out our result for you. When compared, we got 0.0000000000 seven zero four seven and Cavendish got zero point zero 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 six six seven four. Our calculation stands at merely one order of magnitude off, and considering the hurdles we faced in terms of time lapse, air currents, and measurement accuracy, I'd go so far to say we did pretty well. We hope this video served to enhance your understanding of how the concept of gravitational attraction works and is calculated. Until next time, this has been an episode of The Physics Boys.